your first gut reaction is that you want to help. A child has gone missing. So everyone came with best intention. That created a sense of chaos and a sense of competition. If you have Madeline, let her come home to her mummy, daddy, brother and sister. Too many cooks, all well-intentioned, spoiling the, the broth of the initial investigation. The bad feeling, the lack of translation ability, those things have not been fundamentally addressed. The secret report describes the Portuguese police investigation as haphazard. It fell short, it says, of the performance that would be expected of any British force. But the initial search for Madeleine McCann was also hampered by police and other agencies in the UK, says the report. They fought a turf war in a rush to get involved and caused lasting damage to the Portugal-UK relationship, according to the report's author. When this happened, your first gut reaction is that you want to help. A child has gone missing. Uh, in CEOP, we were no different than, than, than anyone else. So there's this rush to help in, in the early stage. And I think because the UK did not uh, have a structure for dealing with this, so everyone came with best intention. That created a sense of chaos and a sense of competition. People putting their hand up to help and wanting to help. Uh, and in many instances, in my opinion, wanting to be seen to help. The report outlines the many organisations involved and some of the problems caused. The McCann's home police force, Leicestershire, took overall control of the UK response but was ill-equipped to deal with such a big investigation. The force was put in charge by the Association of Chief Police Officers, a bad decision, according to the report. The Portuguese were also being offered advice by Mr Gamble's own organisation, SEOP, the Metropolitan Police, the Serious Organised Crime Agency and the National Policing Improvement Agency. The Crime Stoppers charity set up its own appeal hotline. At the same time, it's understood, the Prime Minister and other ministers at the Home Office and the Foreign Office were demanding briefings. With so many contacts, the Portuguese authorities were apparently left confused and uncertain who exactly they should be dealing with in the UK. I have no doubt that relationships from the outset with the Portuguese um, were impacted by it and I think that had a long-term uh, negative effect on the investigation and I think to this very day um, the Metropolitan Police investigation team that's, that's engaged now are still having to manage and massage that relationship and perhaps to be fair to the Portuguese mend some fences uh, that were trodden on in, in the early days. Mr Gamble wrote the Home Office report, the Scoping Review, when he was head of SEOP, the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre. Today, he runs his own safety advice and technology business. Was it more than competition? Was it sort of interforce rivalry? I think if we look at it honestly, um, there were some in leadership roles who wanted to represent their organisation and be seen, or their organisation be seen, to take a lead role and, and provide critical input in this and, and, and that made it difficult for a small uh, regional force like Leicestershire who you know they will say they came to London you know walking about from agency to agency trying to, to, to lay this off. SEOP certainly didn't have the capacity um, or the in-house expertise to deal with it given its size and focus uh, and I mean we, we ended up in the long term where we perhaps should have been in the beginning with the Metropolitan Police. The issue is highlighted by the authors of a new book, Looking for Madeline, which is to be published next week. It's a, it was a case of too many cooks, all well-intentioned, um, spoiling the, the broth of the initial investigation. And then the mistakes, or, or should I say missteps, began to pile one upon another. The problems that 
grew out of that race to help in the initial phase of the Madeleine investigation, the problems of lack of coordination between the Portuguese police and the British police, the bad feeling, the lack of translation ability, those things have not been fundamentally addressed. Leicestershire police were given the lead UK role because that's the county where the McCann family lives. It was their local force's job to explore and pass on to the Portuguese any potential evidence in Britain. The report says that a regional police force such as Leicestershire simply wasn't up to the job. But it never questioned its appointed role as the UK's Madeline coordinator. But the force and other agencies did frequently question the way the Portuguese authorities went about their investigation. And that, says the report, led to accusations that the UK was acting as a colonial power. That early bad feeling led to the sacking of the original Portuguese detective chief, Gonzalo Amaral. He was fired after suggesting in an interview that British police were not independent and appeared to be working for the McCanns. And this year, Scotland Yard accused the Portuguese of being bureaucratic and slow in their cooperation over the current Metropolitan Police investigation in the Algarve. The sensitivity of the relationship has not gone away in the seven years since Madeleine vanished. From time to time, you, you see some signs that um, they're working well together, but equally, you're always conscious, even in interviews like this, of saying the wrong thing in case the wrong person in Portugal is offended by it. And then, you know, people decide to lift their toys and, and go home. And I, I'm sure the McCanns, uh, as parents watching this, have been really sensitive to that. In his report, Mr Gamble urged the setting up of a round-the-clock UK police centre to respond in a more coordinated way to missing children here and abroad. Well, I'm not confident that, that there would be, uh, because if you look back to you know, the aftermath of this, one of the critical recommendations from the scoping review is that we created a single national centre, that whether you were in Birmingham, Belfast or Barcelona and your child went missing under these type of circumstances, you'd have a place you could call. That place would have access uh, to engage social media, to engage other agencies, to engage the highways network, very much to pull together an Amber Alert Plus type scenario, um, but give you good advice at the time and begin the engagement with the o o overseas jurisdiction. But that hasn't happened. And the man who once led the UK's child protection law enforcers isn't confident that if another Madeleine McCann vanished in similar circumstances, the response would be any better. Martin Brunt, Sky News.